Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to my channel. Ask Jimmy Smith. Uh, sorry for my voice today. I'm a little congested for some reason. I don't know if it's because the weather's changing or what, but uh, if my voice goes out a little bit, I apologize. Uh, but I'm really excited to be here with you today and be talking about a good overview of the different repricers that are out there for Amazon FBA businesses. Now, there are repricers that exist for other platforms as well and ones that integrate with multiple platforms, but I'm specifically going to be talking about the ones that are just just for Amazon right now, uh, because that's the majority of the audience here. And it's also the majority of the use cases that I've seen in the past. Um, and so I'm going to go through, first and foremost, uh, the different myths that I see with repricers. I'm going to talk about our story of how we started using a repricer and when for our uh, million dollar per year Amazon FBA business. I'm going to go through an overview of my favorite repricers, as well as the common ones that I see other people use some differences, some basic tips and best practices for how to set them up, uh, and then I'll wrap it up from there. So a little bit of, uh, you know, quite a bit of content here for you today, but really excited uh, to be able to, to go through this. Side note, uh, in my book, Side Hustle to Full-Time Income, I'll put this right here. There's also a link in the description. Uh, but in this book, I've got information on how we set up our repricer and some more information uh, on what I recommend that you do to get the proper settings in your repricer. And that gets a little technical and detailed. I didn't want to get into it here. I've also gone over it in my private Replens Facebook group for, with the course. So if you're interested in any of that, you can head over to my website, askjimmysmith.com and check that information out as well, or just uh, check out the book. I've got a bunch of information in there as well. And the link is below. Uh, so without further ado, let's Let's go ahead and get into it. So I wanted to talk a little bit about why repricers are important. First and foremost, if you've been selling on Amazon for a while, I'm sure that you know the reasons. Uh, but if you're brand new to Amazon, you might not even think about it. And repricers help you to consistently be in the buy box. So if you're selling products on Amazon and you're seeing that the buy box uh, is ultimately uh, continuing to go to other people, your sales aren't going that well, you've been sending more new products, uh, and ultimately you're not seeing the sales happening because you go in and you look once a day and there's competition a penny or two below you, uh, well, that can start to become frustrating. And so a repricer helps you to automatically, uh, within 5, 10, 15 minutes of a price change happening uh, with your competition, the repricer will automatically reduce your price or increase it uh, if the prices go up as well. So uh, that's the beauty of a repricer. It will help you to increase your prices if you set it up properly also. Now, uh, I've got a few different ones that I like. I've tried, uh, I think we've tried three different ones over the course of our uh, seven figure per year Amazon business. And we've stuck with one consistently now for the last couple of years. However, for newer sellers, I actually recommend two different ones and we'll get into that in a second. But there are a few different repricing myths that I'd like to bust for you first. So the first repricing myth is that you can set it and forget it. That once you turn on the repricer, it's just gonna magically work and you never have to look at your repricing again. Well, that's not true. You want to make sure that you are uh, essentially repricing your repricer because there are going to be things that change. There are going to be times when competition drops below your minimum. There's going to be times uh, when maybe you need to raise the price and, and up your maximum price so that you can get more of a profit margin on those particular products that maybe have sold out or been discontinued. So you're going to need to make sure that you're constantly keeping up with it. However, you don't have to do it on a daily basis. If you're not using a repricer at all, I highly recommend on a daily basis going in and checking your pricing and just upping or, or lowering your prices by a penny. Don't lower the buy box, but you can up it by a penny or two and then the next day lower it by a penny or two. But if you've got a repricer on, it should be doing that for you. And you'll just want to check it about once per week, um, maybe a little bit more if you'd like, but you can also check it less if you'd like to. Uh, ultimately, though, you do need to make sure that you're keeping up with your repricer and making sure the mins and maxes are entered as well as um, that ultimately you're still competitive. So the second myth is that you don't need one. Uh, I've heard people say, hey, you know what? I can reprice my own products. That's perfectly fine. I don't need one. And that might be true for the first hundred SKUs or so that you have active in your business uh, because you can keep up with it. But at a certain point when you're adding more uh, products to your arbitrage Amazon business, you're going to be seeing that it's very difficult to keep up with the repricing. And ultimately, you need to have something that is doing it for you. Uh, and also, just getting in there every day and doing the repricing is a pain, not only does it take time, but it really is kind of a pain to have to do that every day to, to continue to show Amazon that you're 
paying attention to your listings. So a repricer helps to fix that problem for you. And then the third myth that I see is that you should use automatic minimums and maximums in the repricer. So plenty of repricers, I think almost every repricer nowadays have automatic settings. You can turn it on to say, I want my minimum to always be at a 30% ROI or a 10% profit or whatever you want it to be. Uh, or you can set it up that your maximum is always at 100% ROI or maximum of 200% ROI. And I see that as a big problem for us arbitrage and especially replen sellers because there's so many price fluctuations that can happen, but there's also so many different opportunities. If I'm buying a product for a dollar and I'm going to make $5 on it, but my maximum setting in my repricer is a 200% ROI, well, then it's going to cap out my price at a $2 profit instead of the $5 profit. And that's a big problem. But if you're setting something to have an automatic ROI of maybe a minimum of 30% ROI, and you're typically selling it at a 80% ROI, but some rogue seller comes in and drops it to 40% and they only had one or two items, well, then your repricer is going to automatically follow those people all the way down. And that can become a problem too, where you start to lose out on some money. Ask me how I know. The reason that I know this is because we have made that mistake many times. Also, with that automatic minimum and maximum, you're most likely going to be dealing uh, with uh, some potential for high pricing errors on Amazon, which will put all of your products into an inactive status. And the reason that is, is because if you have an automatic maximum of, let's say, two or 300% ROI, but that's just a ridiculous price and your repricer actually reprices you up there for some reason, well, then it's going to throw it into a high pricing error. And I've seen numerous people have that problem where they have like 50 or 60 um, high pricing errors because they have a maximum ROI as an automatic setting. So I personally recommend that you set them up manually. And I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. Now, for us in our business, as I said, we've tried three different repricers over the course of our, um, you know, since we started in December 2015, we waited way too long to get a repricer. We actually waited until we had over 300 active SKUs and we just couldn't take it anymore. It just got too overwhelming. But we also noticed that there were a lot of sales we were missing because we weren't able to keep up with the buy box throughout the day. And so we decided, hey, let's get one now. Uh, and, and once we did, we saw a huge increase in our sales uh, because we were able to uh, keep up with the buy box. And we were also able to put, set those minimums and maximums that ultimately allowed us to make the profit that we wanted and keep us within a good guideline so that we we didn't go too crazy high on the maximum or too crazy low on the minimum. And it really helped us tremendously. And we still use one obviously today as we've grown our business. I personally recommend once you're over 100 active SKUs, then you should get a repricer because if you, up until that point, you can probably manage it. You don't want to add too many other recurring expenses into your business. But once you're at 100 active SKUs, then you've been in this for long enough that you know how to find products, uh, you know how to send in shipments, you know that you like doing the business, you want to continue doing it. And so you can save a lot more time and make a lot more money utilizing a repricer after that point. Um, now, we looked at the most expensive ones. There's repricers out there that will, it's got crazy algorithms and they take a percentage of your sales because they're, they claim to be so good. And we've looked at the cheapest ones as well. And ultimately, we land somewhere in the middle for what we uh, like to use. I personally think from a repricer standpoint for replens and arbitrage, I'll give you my favorite recommendations here in a minute. Um, we did try the algorithmic ones and we saw that ultimately it wasn't what we needed for replens because there's so much that changes uh, with competition and pricing that the algorithms really weren't designed for us as arbitrage sellers. They're designed more for private label and wholesale sellers who have less competition and can reprice against competitive listings too, other listings. So if you're on here watching this and you're doing private label or wholesale, look for a repricer that has algorithmic repricing that will reprice against other ASINs, other listings that you're, that's your direct competition. There's a lot of power that can be in that, but from a replens arbitrage standpoint, it's just too much and it's going to cost too much money and it really doesn't do much for us. So uh, we ended up going some of the more basic ones and ultimately uh, I'll, I'll give you those here in just a second. Now, as an overview, uh, what a repricer does, as I mentioned earlier, I want to make sure I put this in my, my notes that I wanted to cover. A repricer will automatically reprice the inventory for you to keep competitive. Traditionally, you're going to see uh, multiple price points for repricers. Some are based off of your active SKU count. Some are based off of how often you want them to reprice. So some may say uh, reprice every 15 minutes. Some may say reprice immediately. Uh, and so obviously, if you're doing it faster, it's going to be more expensive. 
Ultimately, the way Amazon does reporting anyway, it's never going to be immediate. It's, there's usually going to be a five minute delay or so, uh, even on the fastest of fast repricers. But we choose to do the ones that are more immediate. Um, and typically, because we have so many SKUs, we got to that level where that many SKUs automatically gets us to the point where it's the immediate repricing anyway. Um, as I said earlier, once you're over 100 active SKUs, I recommend that you get it. You definitely don't want to wait until you're over 300 like we did because we just wasted a bunch of time and lost probably a good amount of money by not keeping up with it consistently. Now, the four most recommended repricers, the four that I see most people use uh, are, first and foremost, I see a lot of people uh, utilize Aura. That's A-U-R-A. -A, and I'll give you a link in the description. It's um, bit.ly. So forward slash replens with an S, go Aura. So that's my affiliate link. I'll put that in the description for you. There's Profit Protector Pro, uh, which is another bit.ly forward slash PPP repricer. That's my affiliate link. And then there's Be Cool, who a lot of people use. And I actually don't, I haven't, recommended that one in a while. Um, and then there's informed.co, which we use, but it gets to be a little bit too expensive for newer sellers. And so those are the four most common that I see most people using. I've seen other ones, um, a ton of other ones. Uh, and so I would list them all for you, but those are my four most recommended and favorite ones, also the four most common. So uh, Aura, PPP or Profit Protector Pro, Be Cool and informed.co. Now Be Cool is typically the cheapest, uh, but I've seen some issues come up. I believe they fixed those issues. And I know high, high and big sellers recommend Be Cool. So I want to put it out here because I, I know it's been in the game for the longest. They're making a lot of really cool changes uh, to what they're doing on their software side. And they're doing a great job at it. Um, and so I want to put it out here as a recommendation. Now, uh, Profit Protector Pro uh, is one that's a little bit newer, but I've seen some of the coolest strategies come from Profit Protector Pro. I've seen a lot of people switch over to it and just have amazing success with Profit Protector Pro as well. Um, and my favorite feature with them is that you can actually get their Google Chrome extension and reprice on the Amazon page, which I haven't seen in any other repricer that I've looked at and I might be missing it. But at the time of this recording, I've never seen another repricer do that uh, with Profit Protector Pro. The downsides with PPP is that ultimately they don't connect to, to Inventory Lab like Be Cool and Aura does uh, or uh, informed as well. They connect Inventory Lab and they have got a few less features than some of the better ones. But uh, Profit Protector Pro is a very good value and price. There's just going to be a little bit more manual labor on your part, uh, a little bit more time involved as well. And it is a newer software, but I've seen a lot of people have success with it. So I'll put the link below if you're interested in that one. Uh, also, now for Aura, it's going to be more expensive than Profit Protector Pro and more expensive than Be Cool. Now, if you were to get all of the features and bells and whistles in Be Cool as you have in Aura, they're about the same price. I think they're within a dollar of each other per month. But Aura has a very longstanding history, an extremely good uh, customer support staff. Uh, and they also, I've never heard of one complaint from Aura. Now I might be wrong. I'm sure there's people out there that have a complaint, but this is the only repricer that I've never seen a complaint for, uh, which is Aura, which is kind of interesting. And so that's why I recommend them. They are more expensive, but you do get a little bit more of a value from them uh, within terms like they connect to your inventory lab account. So they can uh, download all of your costs from inventory lab directly, just like Be Cool can, just like inform.ca. CEO can. Um, but you don't need that. You can ultimately with Inventory Lab do an export and import it into whatever repricer you use if you want. But Aura, I really like if I had to switch from Informed, I would probably switch to Aura just because I trust them, the longstanding history and great customer support. Additionally, in Profit Protector Pro, they have amazing customer support too. I've been in contact with them a few different times uh, because I'm going to be doing a breakdown of both Profit Protector Pro and Aura in two separate videos because I want to go through them because I personally think that these are the two best repricers, especially for newer sellers and especially for what we do with replens and arbitrage. Now, inform.co, the reason I put it on here is because it's the one that we use. So I'd feel kind of hypocritical if I gave you these other ones and we don't even use them. But informed, uh, we started a long time ago when their pricing strategy and structure was a lot more affordable. They have a lot of features for private label and wholesale sellers that I think is some of the best of the best, but they are more expensive. Now upfront, if you're a brand new seller, it might actually be a reasonable price. But as you grow with their new pricing structure, they're a little bit too much money, in my opinion, for replens and arbitrage. If you're getting into private label or wholesale, 
definitely check out inform.co amongst the other ones and see what fits your best uh, budget and what you need the most. Um, but we use it because we're grandfathered in on the old plan and we don't want to go to the trouble of switching all of our repricing strategies over. So there's a ton of amazing features between those four different repricers. Those are my favorite from a replens or arbitrage perspective, even if you're just doing clearance arbitrage. A couple of best practices I want to give you just whenever you're looking at any repricer and you're doing arbitrage. First, you want to compete against other FBA sellers, but the buy box first and foremost. So we compete for the buy box first. Now, if within the buy box, it's a merchant fulfilled seller, we have our repricer repriced 3% higher than that merchant fulfilled seller, because we want to be a little bit of a higher price considering we're a prime Amazon FBA seller. Um, so that gets us uh, within the buy box range so that we can still rotate in with that FBM seller. Uh, additionally, if we're competing against Amazon ever, where Amazon's on the listing, we actually have our repricer set to price 2% lower than Amazon, but we do have a minimum on it. We've seen in the past that Amazon sometimes won't chase it down if, it, if there's 2% lower. Now, that's why we're pretty tight with our minimums so that we don't get into a crazy low balling of Amazon uh, type of a thing, but that's how we have it set up. I also recommend that you enter your own minimum and maximum within your repricer. As I said earlier, you don't want those automatic ones because they can really screw up a lot. I've seen so many problems with pricing come from the automatic side of things because we do replens, we do arbitrage. And so we need a way to set up our own minimums and maximums. Now within that, I typically will say, okay, we're pricing this price at a, a very affordable price based off the buy box, based off our Keepa history, which if you've been on this channel long enough, you've seen that. So based off our Keepa history, we're going to price it, let's say at $20. Well, my minimum, I'm going to set up as a dollar cheaper than what I sent it in at. And my maximum, I usually put it $4 higher. There's some caveats to it, but it allows me to do this very quickly. Um, you know, if you're in the small and light program, you want to make sure the maximum repricing price is $8. So you don't go over that price. Now, depending on when you're watching this in the future, it might be $9 or $10. At the time of this recording in 2022, the maximum small and light price is $8. So there's some caveats, but typically whenever we enter in our minimums and maximums, we do a dollar less than our current price for our minimum and $4 higher uh, than our current price for our maximum, because we know we bought it based off the buy box history, based off consistency. And just ultimately we want to avoid those high pricing errors. And we want to avoid just getting tanked on a price because we followed some rogue seller all the way down when we bought based off Keepa showing us that it's a steady price. So there are going to be some challenges. As I mentioned earlier, you will have to reprice your repricer. You're going to have to make sure that you keep up with adding those minimums and maximums. Typically once per week, you can go in, spend 30 minutes, do your minimums and maximums with an upload, uh, go through all of your products that uh, you know need repricing on your minimums and maximums because there's competition lower than you or competition higher that you can raise it. Uh, and so you can spend 30 minutes to an hour each week or have a virtual assistant do that. But ultimately that's the challenge is you do still need to go in and reprice your repricer. Um, and so ultimately, uh, whenever you look at this, uh, I wanted to just give you a quick overview or it's, uh, I guess a very seamless overview. I don't know how quick this has been, but of what a repricer is let's bust some myths of that repricer. Let's talk about our story for the fact that we waited way too long to get one and how our business was able to grow and stay consistent with that uh, repricer. And we've been able to outsource it with some of those systems that we've created, even though we're entering in the minimums and maximums ourselves. Uh, and so hopefully this helps you. Uh, I am going to do a breakdown of the repricers for Aura and Profit Protector Pro. The links for both of those are in the description because they are my affiliate links, just full disclosure. Um, also, if you go to askjimmysmith.com forward slash best dash resources, you can see all of the different uh, resources I recommend for your business. So if for whatever reason you're watching this a year from now, you can go and see if maybe I recommend a different repricer uh, than Aura or Profit Protector Pro at that time because something new came out or something's changed. So uh, you can go see all of those resources at askjimmysmith.com forward slash best dash resources. Thank you so much for being on here. Uh, comment below. Have you, did this help you first and foremost? Uh, do you have any questions about repricers? Do you have a favorite repricer I didn't mention that you'd like me to cover? Uh, and also uh, like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel. The button's still red. You aren't subscribed. So I'd really appreciate it if you do that so that it helps me to know that I'm doing a good job, gets the word out more and helps other people as well. So 
hopefully this was a blessing for you. Uh, hopefully this helped you and uh, looking forward to doing more videos uh, soon. So thank you so much. I hope you have a great day and a blessed rest of your week.